Hi students, uh, this is the third video on uh, MCQs questions. Uh, we have first chapter also having MCQs questions in uh, midterm examination and also uh, in final examination. Similarly, second chapter does not have any questions on MCQs. And third chapter is current electricity. This chapter contains uh, MCQs questions. So let us start the video. Uh, we will discuss some uh, if, uh, most expected uh, questions on current electricity. Okay, now see. Okay, these are the questions we will discuss one by one here. Okay, now see, first question is, um, okay, now I'm discussing first question. Okay, here is the question. Uh, what is the first question? Now see, electric current uh, is a, okay, they are asking electric current. Okay, here options are given, uh, scalar quantity, vector quantity, uh, both A and B means uh, electric current is a scalar quantity or vector quantity and uh, number only. Okay, now see, we know already current, it does not have a particular direction. It means uh, it moves in all the direction. Uh, so the, it is a scalar quantity. Okay, the right answer is here. A is the right answer, right? Now we move on to the second question. Okay, now see, this is the second question. Let's, okay, right, see, so what is the second question here? The second question is, okay, now see, this is the question. Uh, if if the Wheatstone bridge is balanced, uh, the current through the galvanometer is infinite, zero, high, and low. Okay, these are the question. Okay, we know already Wheatstone bridge, what is the principle? We know already P by Q equal to R by S. Uh, means uh, at a galvanometer, uh, if, uh, if the bridge is balanced, it means the galvanometer uh, current will be zero. Uh, if the Wheatstone bridge is balanced, it means the current through the galvanometer is zero. Means uh, the B option is right here. B is the right answer. Okay, now third question. Uh, the SI unit of current density is, okay, option A is ampere. Option B is ampere per meter square. Option C is ohm meter is there. And option D is Coulomb meter is there. Okay, one by one we will discuss. Not only this SI unit, we will discuss all the Okay, now see first option is ampere is there. Ampere means it is SI unit of current being already. Ampere per meter square. Okay. And now see what is the current density? Current per unit area. Okay. Uh, current SI unit of current is ampere and area SI unit of area is meter square. So the option is uh, B option is right answer here. Current, current per unit area means ampere per meter square is the right answer okay now see ohm meter is there and coulomb meter is there these are not a sign unit of current density current density means current per unit area so the answer is ampere per meter square okay now fourth question will be this one the resistance of a conductor is independent of what the resistance of a conductor is independent of what okay now see we already um it depends on temperature yes it depends material Cross sectional area and shape of cross section. Now, see, uh, resistance of a conductor is directly proportional to its temperature, and it also depends on which type of material it is whether it is nichrome, copper, okay, different uh, material have different uh, resistances, and it also depends upon the cross sectional mm -hmm. area, means it depends on length spread, but it does not depend upon the shape of cross section. So, the wrong here. Uh, I mean, so the resistance of a conductor is independent of what means it is it does not depend upon the shape of cross section. So the option is D is the right answer. Now see resistance is depends on temperature and it also depends on material and also it depends on cross sectional areas. Okay, now see fifth question is that the resistivity of a wire depend upon. Okay, resistivity rho is rho equal to we know already. Okay, it depends upon the length, right? Uh, its cross sectional area it also depends uh, its dimension is there and its material is there i think the resistance resistivity of a wire depend upon okay it depends on the its cross section its length it depends upon its length cross sectional area is there its dimension is there and material is there 
uh, the resistivity of a wire depend upon its uh, its dimension right okay now see this is a uh, i think uh, option is uh, resistivity of a wire depend upon its uh, it depend upon its length it depends upon its length okay and uh, right answer is a is the right answer okay now see si unit of mobility of free electron is there okay free electron is mobility means drift velocity per unit electric field okay we know already in theory classes uh, we learned this one what is mobility it is denoted as mu uh, drift velocity per unit electric field. Now see, uh, drift velocity means SI unit of velocity is meter per second and um, unit electric field is uh, volt, volt meter is there. Okay, so, so that's why um, I think option A is the right answer because meter square per volt second. This is the SI unit of mobility. Okay, here meter per volt second is there uh, because the meter per second is right time huh? but volt second one more is there. We need one more M. Uh, that's why B option is incorrect and C is also incorrect and D is also incorrect and right option is A, uh, meter square per volt per second, right? Because uh, mobility means drift velocity per unit electric field. That's why one more extra term will come here M. So the M square divided by V S, right? Okay, move on to the seventh question. The value of internal resistance of a ideal cell is? Okay, internal resistance of an ideal cell is zero. We know already in theory classes we are studied. Internal resistance of an ideal cell is zero, right? So the option A is a right answer. And B option 0.5 is there, C is one is there, and D is infinite is there. So the answer is A, A is a right answer. And eighth question. Now see, Kirchhoff's loop rule. Okay, it is also called as voltage law. Uh, is based on the principle of conservation of what? Okay, it is voltage is there. In the voltage is nothing but what? It is uh, one kind of energy, right? Means energy will be conserved here, right? So first option is charge is there. B option energy is there. C option momentum is there. And D option mass is there. Okay, Kirchhoff's loop rule means voltage rule. This is the, this is based on the principle of law of conservation of energy, right? Energy will be conserved. Now, this is the significance of Kirchhoff's voltage law or also it is also called as loop rule it means energy will be conserved in this uh, law, right? Okay, same thing and one more question is there, similar question we have here. Kirchhoff's junction rule, junction rule is also called as what? Junction rule is called as a current rule uh, is based on the principle of conservation of charge because in current means Q by T is there, charge is there means in this case charge will be conserved in case of junction rule or current law right okay so right answer is a a is the right answer because charge is conserved in case of current law and in case of voltage law uh, energy will be conserved right so the option is a is the right answer and 10th question ohms law is not applicable to what ohms law is not applicable to which okay it is not applicable to what Ohm's law is not applicable to semiconductor. It is not applicable to semiconductor because um, V is directly proportional to I is there. Uh, so the vacuum tubes are all of uh, superconductor and vacuum tubes are there. Means uh, option is D option is right answer is because uh, Ohm's law is not applicable to superconductors and uh, semiconductors and vacuum tubes and all of these, right? Okay, next question, 11th question we'll discuss. The drift velocity does not depend on what? Drift velocity it does not depend on what? Okay, drift velocity, I think dep it depends upon the number of free electrons and magnitude of the current and uh, cross-section of the wire. And it is independent of its length, length of the wire. Okay, it, it does not depend upon the length of the wire, drift velocity, right? It depends upon the cross-section of the wire, number of free electrons, magnitude of current, means it is independent of its length of wire. So the answer is B here. Relaxation time in conductors, okay, increases with increase in temp increase of temperature, uh, decreases with increase of temperature. It is independent of temperature and mass. So you remember students here, relaxation time is inversely proportional to its temperature. If the temperature increases, means the relaxation time decreases. Okay, in relaxation time in conductors, it decreases with increase of temperature, right? Or this uh, option B is a 
right answer. My next uh, 13th question is the mobility of electron is. Okay. Mobility means you know, already by definition we have mobility of electron is what? Mobility means drift velocity per unit electric field. Right. Okay, now see here, option A is the right answer. Drift velocity per unit electric field. This is the right answer. Drift velocity per unit current is there. Drift velocity per unit potential is there. Drift velocity per unit voltage is there. So the option A is the right answer here. Okay, which of the following VI graph means voltage current graph for good conductor? Okay, in case of good conductors, uh, this type of straight line or linear graph will get. Okay, this side voltage is there. This side current is there. So the option A is the right answer. This is not and this is not and this is not, right? Uh, I think students, um, this type of question will be arised on this topic because uh, uh, your three graphs are there. One is uh, copper, nichrome, and one more is there. We'll discuss if question is there, means we'll discuss that one, right? Okay, so it is there, right? The following graph represents the variation of resistivity versus temperature of the three different materials. Okay, uh, dear students, this is very important. Okay, uh, now see here three graphs are given. In these three graphs, which one is, uh, means according to, we have to, we have here some answers are given accordingly, this we have to arrange, right? Now see this type of graph, means it is linearly increasing, means, okay, this is a, I think this is the copper graph and uh, it is, okay, here uh, suddenly, uh, means uh, there is no origin here, this is nichrome graph is there. And uh, it is decreasing means it is a semiconductor is there. Okay. Means the uh, first graph is related to copper, second graph is related to nichrome, and third graph is related to semiconductor. Okay, students, uh, these three graphs are very important. You remember these three graphs because uh, one question will be there on this chapter. Okay, if uh, this type of graph we are getting means uh, this is semiconductor. Here, other than origin, it is uh, linearly increasing means it is nichrome is there. And origin and linearly it is increasing means this is the example for copper. Okay, first one is copper, second one is nichrome, and third one is semiconductor. Okay, now okay, now we'll see that. First one is what copper. Okay, in option copper is here is there and this is there. Okay, here copper is there, here also copper is there, and second is nichrome. Okay, this this is nichrome and this is semiconductor. Oh, sir. So clearly uh, option B is the right answer. Okay, now see so 16th question we'll discuss. The current drawn from a cell is maximum when? Okay, now just only we discussed the internal resistance of ideal cell is zero. Okay, if you want to get more current means, what is your option? Okay, external resistance. Capital R is external resistance and small r is the internal resistance. Okay, first option is given R equal to zero means external resistance is zero means what will happen to the current? And second option is given R is less than R means the external resistance is less than internal resistance. Uh, so similarly, C option is external resistance is greater than internal resistance and D equal to both are same is that current drawn from a cell is maximum means only in case of external resistance is zero means you will get maximum current, right? So the option A is a right answer here. Okay, now 17th question. Uh, the device which is based on the principle of Wheatstone network is, okay, it is a no doubt. Uh, Wheatstone network is works on the principle of Wheatstone bridge. So the option A is the right answer. Potentiometer is there. We'll discuss on this one. Why it is used and MCG is there. Moving coil galvanometer is there. So the option is A option is the right answer. Okay, now we'll discuss 18th question and this is the last question. The device used to measure EMF of a cell. Okay, we know already EMF of a cell can be uh, uh, can be measured by using potentiometer. Potentiometer is a device used to measure the EMF of a cell. And also, uh, we can calculate the internal resistance of a cell by using potentiometer. So the air voltmeter is there. Voltmeter measures the voltage. Ammeter is there. It measures the current. And potentiometer is there. It is a device used to measure the EMF of a cell. And also, it calculate the or measure the internal resistance of a cell. OK? Uh, this is all about the third chapter that is current electricity. In this chapter, midterm portion, we have two questions and in perennial examination, one question will be there. In this video, we have discussed only uh, mostly expected questions are discussed. Thank you. Thank you for watching.